President Muhammad Buhari arrived in Ebony State on Thursday morning for a two-day official visit. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, the Nigerian Navy says it has seized over 3 million litres of stolen oil across the country in recent operations. The Navy said its newly inaugurated Operation Dakata Dabarawu has made a series of arrests and seizures of ships and crew members across the nation's maritime domain involved in illegal activities. It said over 2,178,500 litres of stolen crude oil, about 787,500,000 litres of diesel and 20,000 litres of kerosene, all valued above 1.7 billion naira, were seized in April 2022. Naval Headquarters spokesman Ade Dotun Ayovogan announced this in a statement on Wednesday. The OPDDB was inaugurated on April 1st to check crude oil theft and other economic sabotage in the country's maritime domain. At number 9, the ruling All Progressives Congress has extended the sale of its expression of interest and nomination forms for all elective positions. The deadline for the sale of the forms, which was initially May 6th, was extended to May 10th. APC also rescheduled the date for Congresses to elect local government, area, state and national delegates. The Congresses will now hold from May 12th to 14th. The National Working Committee of the party had fixed May 6th as the deadline for sale of forms and submission was set for May 10th. In a statement released by APC spokesperson Felix Mocha on Wednesday, the party disclosed that the sale of forms will now close on May 10th, while the deadline for submission is now May 11th. Mocha said the revised timetable was issued by the National Organizing Secretary, Suleiman Agungu. At number 8, a 26-year-old lady identified as Ugochuku Umwari has been allegedly raped to death by a gang of men in Ebony State. It was gathered that the incident took place at Hopin Hotel along Ngbowo Street in Abakiliki, Ebony State. Reports say the deceased lady arrived at the hotel in the company of a group of young men on Monday night but was found dead in the room on Tuesday morning with her legs, hands and mouth tied. The police commanding Ebony State confirmed the incident on Thursday morning. The spokesperson of the police in the state, Loveth Oda, said the command will arrest and prosecute the killers of the lady. She stated that investigations confirmed that Umore was gang raped as more than 12 used condoms was discovered in a hotel room. At number 7, the majority leader of the Nigerian Senate, Yaya Abdullahi, has picked the nomination and expression of interest forms of the All Progressives Congress for the Kebi State governorship election. Abdullahi, who is representing Kebi North Senatorial District, picked the forms on Wednesday. The lawmaker joins the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, who has also declared interest to contest under the APC in Kebi. At number six, over 200 young farmers from different parts of the country are on their way to Israel and Morocco for a six-day intensive training in greenhouse farming and livestock management. This is part of the federal government's National Young Farmers Scheme, a program managed by the National Land Development Authority. Speaking at the send-off of the first batch in Abuja, Nauda's Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer, Prince Paul Ikone, said the training had become necessary to allow the young farmers to acquire advanced knowledge that would benefit the country for many years to come. 100 of the farmers will be engaged in the process of learning proper crop production and greenhouse management, while the other 100 will be engaged in animal husbandry, slaughtering and meat processing. Ikone said the young men and women selected from across the 36 states and the FCT will be integrated into Naldao farm programs, which makes it more sustainable and unique. He further revealed that when they return, they would be empowered by the federal government through the Central Bank of Nigeria. At number five, former governor of Ogun State and senator representing Ogun Central District, Senator Ibikunle Amosu has declared to run for president on the platform of the All Progressives Congress. Amosun declared his presidential ambition on Thursday afternoon at the Shewu Musa Yaradwa Center in Abuja. He said, Today I am formally announcing my candidacy for the presidential ticket of our great party, the All Progressives Congress, and the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Those who attended his declaration were his wife, Olufun Shaw Amosun, the representative of the First Lady Aisha Buhari, Governor of Ekiti State Kayode Fayemi, and lawmakers from both chambers of the National Assembly. 
At number four, Vice President Yemi Yoshibanjo has purchased the 100 million Naira All Progressives Congress expression of interest and nomination forms to contest the 2023 presidential election. Oshibanjo's spokesman, Laolu Okonde, made this known on Thursday. Okonde said the forms were picked by representatives of Oshibanjo's support groups. He said a passionate team of support groups and individual Nigerians from across the country have raised funds to support the purchase of APC nomination forms for the Vice President's 2023 presidential bid. Today, the forms are being collected by representatives of the team, just as the VP continues his interactions with APC stakeholders across the states. Today, VP Oshibanjo is in Cross River and Bayelsa states. At number three, the police command in Lagos State said it has arrested a middle-aged Lebanese, John Gregg, who allegedly drove against traffic recklessly, knocked down a lady and escaped. The spokesman of the Lagos State Police Command, Benjamin Hundain, confirmed the arrest of the Lebanese on his verified Twitter handle on Thursday. Hundain said on May 4th at about 7.45 a.m., a middle-aged Lebanese by name John Gregg drove a Toyota 4Runner recklessly and against traffic on Sanusi Fafunwa Road, Victoria Island. According to him, the suspect knocked down one female, Omotomi Akinsonya, which resulted in serious injuries to her leg. He added that the suspect was currently in their custody and that investigations were ongoing. At number two, a new case of the Ebola virus has been confirmed in the Northwestern Democratic Republic of Congo. This brings the total number of confirmed cases to three since the 14th Ebola outbreak was declared in the country in late April. The Congolese Health Ministry confirmed the third case of Ebola in Mbandaka on Thursday. The World Health Organization Regional Office for Africa tweeted on Thursday that the case, a 48-year-old man, was a high-risk contact of the first case. It added that 444 contact cases had been identified. Finally, at number one, President Muhammadu Buhari arrived in a Boeing state on Thursday morning for a two-day official visit. Buhari, who arrived in the state at about 11.15 a.m., was received by a Boeing state governor, David Umayi, and other top government officials. The presidential jet conveying the president landed on the pavilion inside the governor's residence in his hometown in Uburu, a house at a local government area of the state. After exchanging pleasantries with top government officials, traditional rulers among others, Buhari went ahead to inspect a guard of honor mounted by the Nigerian army. While in Eboi, the president will inaugurate the ultra-modern King David University of Medical Sciences, Uburu, with adjoining roads and flyover, as well as the newly constructed presidential lounge in Abakiliki. That's all for today, but before I go, I would like to remind you that the 2023 general elections is drawing closer. Do not fail to get your permanent voters card. See you next time on What's Happening.